When lockdowns happened at the start of the pandemic, the city of Austin faced a challenge. Keeping the city running had never been more important, but it was unsafe to have people come into the office. This meant that emergency assistance, arranging trash collection, monitoring diseases in the city, and a million other things all needed to happen from home. But not all office staff were ready to work from home. This meant they needed to quickly improve their digital literacy to communicate, collaborate, and work fully remotely. To upskill their employees, Austin launched its online learning platform. As a result of this content, Austin's critical services continued to run smoothly during lockdown, while their employees could safely work from home. This story shows how training and developing your employees can contribute to the success of your organization and the well-being of your employees. My name is Nelly and welcome to a new episode of Learning Bytes. In this video, you'll learn what training and development is, why it's important, six best practices for successful training and development, and you'll learn about the different learning styles you need to know when designing a learning intervention. So stay tuned. But first, don't forget to like this video, hit the notification button and subscribe to our channel. Now let's dive in. Training and development aims to increase an employee's skills, knowledge, and competency with educational programs. This can lead to better performance at work. Training and development are often used interchangeably, but there are subtle differences. Training is all about teaching immediately applicable knowledge, skills, and attitudes needed in a specific job. The aim here is to improve job performance. An example of training would be graphic design for marketing professionals. Meanwhile, development is a long-term process to broaden or deepen knowledge. This has to fit within an employee's professional development goals and the organization's goals. An example could be giving someone additional responsibilities to build new skills or assigning them a mentor to provide career guidance. Developing the workforce is the only way for organizations to keep up with changing customer expectations, technological advancements and disruptions. For Austin, training and development wasn't just a matter of staying ahead of the curve. It was survival. Their employees needed to quickly adapt to remote working with digital processes and communication. Otherwise, critical services such as emergency response, disease surveillance or crime monitoring would collapse. The right training and development strategy can also increase the competitive advantage of an organization. It enables your business to increase employee productivity. Training gives your employees the skills and knowledge needed to do their job more effectively and efficiently. Boost employee engagement and satisfaction. Employees are more motivated when they feel their organization is investing in their development. This can increase their job satisfaction and morale. Improve retention. According to LinkedIn, a whopping 94% of employees are willing to stay at a company longer if it invests in their development. An effective training program will also help your employees be more adaptive, resilient, innovative and knowledgeable. This helps them to continuously improve their skill set to adapt and thrive in our ever-changing world. Now that you know what training and development is and how beneficial it can be for your organization, here are six best practices you need to know. Let's look at the city of Austin again. To identify the skills their employees need to keep the city running while working remotely, they ran a training needs analysis, also known as TNA. In a TNA, you analyze the skills you have today and those you need to operate effectively in the future. For Austin, those were online collaboration, digital literacy and resilience. A TNA also allowed Austin to identify clear learning goals and objectives. With the right goals and objectives, you will be able to start designing your training content and method. Key here is to work towards specific objectives, identify the conditions required for effective behavior, and identify specific and measurable training goals. For the city of Austin, this meant that 1. Employees needed digital skills and emotional resilience to continue working and two, the condition required for effective behavior was going through training that combined video lessons with opportunities to apply knowledge in their daily roles. And three, the specific and measurable training goal was that employees were able to use and collaborate with software like Teams and manage digital workflows and documentation. Your next step is to consider how you can design an engaging and effective training program. When your employees are willing to engage and interact with the training, they are more likely to retain new information and skills. This means that you must balance your training between 
trainer-centered and trainee-centered methods. Trainer-centered methods include seminars, presentations, lectures, and lessons. They focus on the trainer delivering the content. Trainee-centered methods include more interactive elements such as case studies, role-playing, self-directed lessons, simulation, or games. Here, the trainee actively participates in the training delivery. Austin combined both methods. They had their learners watch course videos, which was trainer-centered. During online classes, employees could apply their knowledge and exchange feedback. This was trainee-centered. Technology will become more and more important to the success of your training program. The City of Austin used a third-party learning management system, or LMS, to manage their training programs. But beyond the traditional LMS, there are many new and exciting technologies that enable learning. Think VR training, metaverse onboarding, or personalized learning with AI. The world of learning technology is your oyster. However, don't forget that the technology you use will depend on the strategic goals and learning needs of your organization. Just because VR training might work for one company doesn't mean it will work for another. Understanding the different learning styles of your employees can help you design and communicate your training more effectively. In the long run, this will increase the success rate of your training and development interventions. One of the most popular models to explain different learning styles is called VARC. And no, this isn't the name of some new kind of robot dog. VARC means visual, auditory, read and kinesthetic. Visual learners respond well to pictures, symbols, maps, videos and charts. They will usually ask, can you demonstrate that for me? Auditory learners prefer listening to information presented to them vocally. They will usually ask, can you tell me? Reading learners excel with written information in worksheets, presentations and other text-heavy resources. They will usually ask, is there a manual for this? Kinesthetic learners are hands-on and thrive when they can learn with all their senses. They will usually ask, can I try it myself? Of course, you don't want your employees to learn just for the sake of learning. Otherwise, you can just as well send them to a flower arrangement class. Training should solve organizational challenges and enable the business to achieve its goals. And you won't know if your training meets these requirements if you don't measure its effectiveness. By measuring training effectiveness, you will be able to make a case for spending money on training, ensure that you're investing in the right training initiatives, measure and showcase the value of training. One of the most common models to measure learning effectiveness is the Kirkpatrick Evaluation Model. This is a four-level approach that evaluates training effectiveness based on reaction Action, which is how employees directly respond to training. Learning, meaning what knowledge and skills employees acquired through training. Behavior, which is how behaviors change as a result of training. Impact, which is how training impacts business goals. So there you have it, six best practices for successful training and development. In this video, you've also learned about what training and development is and how it can benefit your organization. To learn more about training and development, Check out our programs at the Academy to Innovate HR. We have a great program on learning and development in which you will learn almost everything there is to know about this topic, so check it out. You can find more information about the program via the link in the description down below. Now before we end, don't forget to like this video, hit the notification button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time.